People in training need more nutritious food. This allows them to achieve greater athletic feats. This was a quote by an ancient Greek nutrition named Celsus. And while the statement is definitely true, the Greek weren't as advanced on the front of nutrition as you might think. Lambs also have flesh that is very moist and productive of mucus, but that of adult sheep is more productive of residue and more unwholesome. The flesh of goats is unwholesome too with bitterness. The Greeks were one of the most revolutionary societies in history and led the way for many ideas, theories and perspectives that we still hold today. They were also one of the first societies that was heavily invested in sports, ranging from discus throwing to pancreation where athletes used boxing and wrestling to damage their opponents as much as possible. Greece was the place to push your body to its absolute limits, including bodybuilding. Bodybuilding was actually a big part of ancient Greek culture. Because Greek gods were sculpted in these extremely strong, muscular ways, aspiring young men wanted to train their bodies in ways that could achieve the same portrayed physiques. And while the athletic competitions did often steal the limelight back then, bodybuilders were present and greatly admired for their strength and physical appearances. The diet of the old Greeks isn't that foreign of a concept to us nowadays. Both the Paleo and the Mediterranean diets have their roots in the old Greeks their diets. That isn't to say that their diet was perfect. Far from it actually. As you'll soon be able to tell, while a lot of core dietary principles were actually understood by the Greeks, they did make a lot of mistakes that were based on absolutely ridiculous assumptions that would be crazy nowadays. A lot of dietary choices were based on their nutritionists saying stuff like, on broad beans, our gladiators eat a great deal of this food every day, making the conditions of their body flesh much stronger and much better. Flesh that is more flabby seems to have much more nutrition than other types of flesh. And other great quotes like that. However, somehow, athletes did actually end up with a diet that was somewhat normal. The Greeks and Romans consumed a diet which was mainly based on cereal, carbohydrates, olive oil, lipids and fats, and wine. Milk, which could not be kept in a warm climate, was made into cheese. This dairy was accompanied by beans and seeds to make up the bulk of their protein intake. Back then, athletes were coached by physicians very much like today, and they all wanted to make their athletes as strong and as fit as possible. But diet being a very new type of research and a lot of these physicians really not knowing what they were doing resulted in a lot of differing opinions. These clashes were kind of like a personal war between them. They all wanted to produce the best athletes that they could so that they could show that their research was the best or at least better than someone else's. And these clashes ranged from all different kinds of topics, but the most important one was meat consumption. Like the Mediterranean diet, the Greeks used to eat very little meat. They found the practice of slaughtering and eating animals horrific. But there are two mentions of meat in the ancient Greek diet that were found in the old physician's transcripts. One report mentions a trainer named Pythagoras that recommended a meat diet to the athletes he trained. The second report is that of Pausanias, who writes of Dromaeus, a long distance runner from Stymphalos. He won two victories at the Dolichos at Olympia, the same number in the Pythian games, three at the Isthmian and five at the Nemean. He is said to have tried meat as part of his diet. Until then, the food for athletes was cheese fresh out of the basket. There are also multiple reports from back then that the athletes that did actually consume meat just kept winning and kept beating the competition. Where today there are plenty alternatives to get enough protein into your diet, back then there just weren't any. You just needed to eat meat in order to get the adequate amount of protein into your diet. And the athletes that did actually do this just kept getting larger, stronger and better than the competition. But even on these forbidden meats, physicians were just constantly arguing over which was best. And because of that, we got some amazing quotes. Pork is the most nutritious of all food. For when? After identical exercises, they take the same amount of a different food on one day. Straight away, on the following day, they appear not only weaker, but also obviously less well fed. These observations regarding dietary choices were extremely abundant and you might be surprised how many people were actually obsessed with finding out what the best diet would be for athletes. Regardless of these absolutely ridiculous statements, over 2000 years ago, the Greeks did actually show us three core principles about diet that we still live today. Number one is that probably people will never find an optimal human diet. Like all those old physicians and trainers showed, people are different and require different foods to perform optimally. This inherent fact fueled all those endless squabbles between these experts, mostly arising due to the lack of understanding that you can't win when it comes to diet. Number two, even if there isn't an optimal human diet, there are still core principles that apply to almost everyone and can make them much healthier and feel much better in their daily lives. 
Like don't eat too many carbohydrates and the ones you do eat, make sure they are from complex sources. Include healthy fats into your diet for adequate hormone production and only eat the flesh of animals. Okay, maybe not that one. And number three, it's important to acknowledge that protein is just extremely important, especially if you're an athlete or interested in fitness. Luckily, our main source of protein doesn't have to be animals anymore. But regardless, adequate protein intake is so important. You can just see it in all those athletes back then that thrived when they actually got enough protein to increase their muscle mass. Protein has been put into everything lately. Protein peanut butter, protein ice cream, protein Snickers. It's just become a rage. Which is kind of a shame, because people will see protein as a fat and not really be interested in its applications and understand how healthy it actually is and how important it is to get into your diet. Which has been consistently shown in the literature to be true. Greeks were ahead of their time in many ways, and in some aspects even diet. Their roots are clearly visible in a lot of popular and healthy diets that we still consume today. So once again, thank you guys so much for liking, subscribing, sharing this video with a friend. It really helps out the channel. And become part of this community. Ask questions, help each other out. We're all here to learn and be the best we can be. Okay, gotta go. Yeah.